Do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! Do it live! I can do I'll write it and we'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I can do I'll write it and we'll do it live! Okay. Fucking thing sucks! Yeah, crappy, crappy pastas. We just re we just be, um, read really bad crappy pastas. I can't remember, but like Sonic came out and like tortured him or something. It was, <sighs> it was something. There was a Sonic plushie with blood stains under its eyes. Whoa! Oh man, I love it. Why blood stains? So uh, that's that's the most first. That's the first thing everyone does for horror. How about like cum stains? Now that's uh, there's that, also that, the term hyper realistic. There's also that term that's thrown yeah, around everywhere. Hyper realistic is the hyper realistic. Word. Cum stains make it all the more realistic and disturbing, you know. Oh god, yeah, no, like. Sonic. And then Sonic just had cum stains. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> I'm gonna come on your face. Uh, so Sonic, why? I'm tails. Gotta go way. blast. Oh, oh, no. no. <laughs> Gotta go splash. <laughs> Remember, do you think when Jimmy Neutron is like finally having sex for the first time and when he comes, he goes, I'm having the peen blast. <laughs> James Isaac Neutron. His mom walks in on him. <laughs> God. Yeah. If you, what if Jimmy did still live with his parents? Like. Shit. He he'd be he'd be living with his parents and he'd be talking about how w people who watch Rick and Morty are like watching it wrong and he's like hyper intelligent for watching it and understanding it. Oh my god, this is this is this sounds very accurate. This sounds like exactly like what Jimmy Neutron would do. Yeah, like um, I Jimmy love Neutron, the Rick and Morty memes. Yeah, <laughs> Jimmy Neutron would be analyzing it and everyone else, all, all the whole neighborhood would be saying Pickle Rick. Oh Jesus. Yeah. the rebel taxi pizza party podcast halloween special and no one's gonna edit this so if anything goes wrong it's his fault not mine uh -huh. who are you people i'm nolan this episode uh -huh. i am blame it on george i thought it was jorge. jorge yeah yeah it's it's complicated yeah it's always it? legally it's jorge but like other people can't say george so whatever yeah that's indistinguishable who's the other person it's me, Nick Nocturne, the spiritual oh. incarnation of Nickelodeon's failing adult programming block, Nick and Night. <laughs> oh. That would be a good name for Nick and Night, Nick Nocturne. <laughs> can we? Who, who invited this guy? Can we? Can we remove? Please. Can we just? We're gonna get. Spooky. No, no, I've come to announce that Martin DDS is back. Bringing up to the George Lopez Glenn theme Martin song. Martin DDS is back. Yeah, oh it's my back. god! They brought they brought it back. They heard that you wow. guys have nostalgia for everything that they used to put on the air so they brought it back your fa favorite claymation show i think Lola should just say no cartoon network should just say you know what we're, we're bringing back all the classic shows we're bringing back my gym partner is a monkey uh no, monkey, squirrel monkey. boy like all the ones nobody wants they should do that problem solvers is coming back guys and it's gonna be oh, amazing. seeing real oh seeing yeah. real seeing, seeing real, man. shit Got, that freaking ghost hunting show, The Other Side. I think it's The that. Other Siders. Oh my god, I wish um, when uh, Ralph the Moon made that video about ghost hunting shows, I wish he included that because the first episode of that is a fucking gold mine of jokes. Because there's when they're reviewing their ghost hunting like footage, there's this very clearly ADR get out. They record and they go, Whoa! <laughs> and you can tell they don't, buy, they're just like not buying their own shit. Uh, have to rewatch that now. Bro. The other side, the other siders is classic Kino. Um, C and Real. The only unironically good show that C and Real had was Unnatural History. I fucking loved that one. 
I like the roller coaster one with the questions. I forgot what it's called. They're like at knots or something. Yeah, it was like a. It, it was basically like some sort of quiz show where you go on a roller coaster and you answer questions while you're on a roller coaster yeah, of all yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to remember what it's called. Brain uh, rush or something. Brain. Yeah, brain, brain rush. rush. Was that it? Okay. Here's I another. Remember catching clips of that, but yeah. mostly because I just kept turning on the TV in hopes of catching. There was one episode with one guy losing his mind while he was on the ride and trying to answer questions. <laughs> I hope somebody vomited on that. Yeah, that would have been funny. I remember this story from, uh, do you remember the game show uh, Legends of the Hidden Temple on yes. Nickelodeon? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. It, it was like a like an Aztec themed American Gladiator. Thing. It was, and it freaked me out. <laughs> but uh, the first episode they ever recorded, this was when the show hasn't even aired yet, so none of the kids really knew what to do. There were, I, I heard this story that there was this one girl who tried to go on this big ass obstacle course and got lost that in the maze thing, and was there for an hour, and eventually she just gave up and jumped out of the thing, and then <laughs> just vomited on the floor. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. That... Guys, guys, I have a great game show idea. Hear me out on this one. Okay, so it's um a woman giving birth to a child. Like, she's in labor, but you have to answer questions. And if you get them right, you get a college fund child. <laughs> <laughs> you get a what? A college funding? <laughs> yeah, college funding for your child. What the fuck? I mean, like, uh, the Legends of the Hidden Temple was kind of a creepy-ass game show. It's like, you, they put you in, like, this weird... um. Three story tall, like Aztec uh, obstacle course, and if like if you don't do something in the right time, this guy in like this this headdress and all this I don't know all this makeup and feathers and stuff just comes out of nowhere and just snatches you and takes you away. Does he like bust through a door or something? It's been a long time. <laughs> something like that. He fucking bust through the door. Like I'm trying to assemble the golden monkey or something. Like this. Like those kids are trying to assemble this monkey thing on a on a stick. <laughs> And these kids are so stupid that they can't do it. And this fucking guy comes out of nowhere and snatches them up. And like, we never see those kids again on the show. <laughs> it was that fucked was up. Good yeah, that's a real lost episode, creepy pasta event. Very yeah, sad. no. <laughs> yeah, and it comes full circle. We're, we're already back to the topic at hand. <laughs> yeah, I'm tired of game shows today. Like, they got to go full on, just scare the fuck out of the kids. But I remember there was this other game show. I don't even know what it was. I mean, I think it was not Nick Arcade, but it was like this virtual reality thing. Essentially, some person walks into, like, a room, and they're on, like, a bridge sort of thing, and there's a giant CG head, like, Andros there shooting balls at them, and I think they had to collect the balls being shot at them or dodge them. I'm not sure, but it was just this giant CG head, and I don't remember what it was, but it was, like, from the late 90s, like, I would say 96, 7. I don't know what it was. Last night, it was actually... Oh, you lost me there. So it's, like, for all my life... All my life, I wonder what it was, and nobody seems to have an answer. So, if anyone on the pod, anyone in the chat knows, go ahead and tell me. Would anyone else have any more game shows or terrible things? Um, not a game show, but the Jeff Dunham show was pretty bad. <laughs> oh God, I forgot about I forgot all about that. <laughs> oh, he's coming to my town this November. I'm gonna go see him. Go see Jeff Dunham for me. Yeah, but uh, I actually kind of like his specials. I totally forgot that they made a show about it about him and his puppets. I remember. I liked a cu- I liked a couple of his specials, if I remember correctly but other than that it was just kind of yeah i remember I, when um when uh tosh.0 first came out like every other channel started doing their own like internet oh yeah video hosting kind of show i think nick Logan had one called them like watch this or something there you was gotta like watch this. five of them where it was just like hey kids look at these internet videos it was like webheads something like that it was like dude can you believe this or something that was what it was called can you believe this baby driving a car or something Bruh, did you see that shit i think the earliest web show video thing was um web junk 20 on vh1 hosted by patrice o'neill rest in peace and oh my god if anyone ever was like there for like classic screw attack like in like 2007 screw attack like back when they were on the video hosting site rever <laughs> a now defunct website that, that it was pre-youtube basically rever was like blip tv where it's like hey you upload a video and they pay you money but also a real person has to inspect every single video ever so it would take a while <laughs> and that was possible. But like there was always this stupid fucking ad that would run like every single video it was called so what is i caught i caught what is this ICOT? It's gonna be on ABC. So what's ICOT? And it never told you when you did watch it on ABC, it was just another fucking YouTube show. Yeah, everybody had one of those for a while. As soon as Daniel Sanchez came on the air and it started getting popular, everybody wanted yeah. to do it. I even remember that MTV tried to kind of bring back the Beavis and Butthead concept uh. with these 
two office worker characters who all they would do is kind of just stick around and watch internet videos as well. Oh, I, I don't even remember DJ in the name. fro. What was it? Yeah, it was DJ in the fro. Yeah. Didn't they have a series of like Beavis and Butthead reacting oh, to a lot of the, things? Well, that's how the old show was. It was just music videos. But uh, when they had that brief reboot, um, they, they started making fun of um, like MTV shows like Jersey Shore and stuff. So I, I thought that was a good evolution to the series. And then it got canceled again. Yeah. And then I, I guess like Mike Judge said, look, we'll just do one season and I'm going to go make Silicon Valley or whatever. And that got canceled too. No, that's still going on. Oh, really? Yeah, I think so. That's a live action show. So it's successful. Oh, anyway, I let me. I guess we should introduce you guys. Like, um, yeah, yeah. I, I just, geez. I just realized that we haven't even introduced ourselves like legitimately, have we? I, I did. Okay, well, yeah. Nick Nocturne. And then we just argued about my name. Nick Nocturne, you, you haven't been on. This is the first time you've been on here. Uh, who are you? <laughs> introduce yourself. What do you do? What do you like? What? What? Yeah. What? What do you enjoy about yourself? But anyway, yeah. Um, blonde or brunettes? Uh. <laughs> Okay, so I'm Nick Nocturne. I'm the host and creator of the Nightline channel here on YouTube, where I cover a lot of uh, dark media, uh, similar to Jorge, except that I've got a greater concentration on web series and um, fictional media products. A lot of abstract art, a lot of weirder things that people create with the purpose of kind of adding to the field of uh, just fictional media and internet storytelling. For anyone who hasn't seen your videos, which video would you recommend them watching? I would definitely go with uh, the Wyoming incident if you want to get a look at what kind of things that I cover usually. I, um, fuck, I fucking love the Wyoming incident. That's one of my favorites of yours. That's one of my favorite things ever. Yeah. Like just like anything on the internet that people usually talk about when it comes to horror, like the Wyoming incident. Um, it's a deep rabbit hole. Just like stuff like that. I love that stuff. Refresh my memory. What was that? Like, was that the Max Headroom well, one? Well, the, before, <laughs> before we refresh you, Pan, I would just like to say that the podcast is sponsored by cashforgold.com. <laughs> Thank so, you, Nolan. Thank you're you. welcome. Uh, so if anybody's interested, uh, cashforgirl.com is part of sponsoring the Wyoming incident and this podcast. But <laughs> anyway, Nick or whatever, whoever is going to recap us on that. Okay, so I'll, I'll bring it up to speed. So the Wyoming incident is something that's been spread across the internet mainly as another Max Headroom incident where there was a supposed live broadcast interruption on local TV stations of this very creepy video, black and white static, um, these 3D images of heads, a lot of threatening messages. But the reality behind it is that this never legitimately happened. Its mm -hmm. only appearance has ever only been on the internet as part of fictional storytelling. So if anybody tells you that it actually happened, no, 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 no. ARG. It's a web series. And it actually is one of the weirdest, deepest, most convoluted projects that I've ever come across in anything that I've covered. It's so low key and atmospheric. It's so just like, it was so weird when I first saw it. It says like all these things, like you will see pretty things. And yeah, you do see like a 3D head floating around and there's like distorted like uh, music in the background. It's, it, it was something else. Yeah, I'm honestly really disappointed how it just completely went off the rails. And it's like a bunch of people were trying to like cobble together a cohesive narrative and world for it and it just fell apart because there was too many cooks <laughs> it takes a lot to make a stew and they clearly just put in too much yeah i mean i always wanted to do that but i don't know with the internet now I, you kind of just like brush every th weird thing off as like yeah it's probably someone's performance art piece speaking of performance art piece pan huh were you not on a certain wham city comedy oh. web series the other oh, night yeah Are let me talk about already? Okay. Okay. So Adult Swim's online, their streaming service, they've had this like weird sitcom thing. Well, not a sitcom, just like some weird play that's on soap opera. Soap opera, yeah. And it was just like uh, just a regular weird creepy soap opera Adult Swim does and uh, they give you a phone number to call and occasionally they answer this orange phone and a different caller would be on and I managed to get on the call and Nolan will. play a clip, but it was not my finest moment. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yes. No, no. We... Do you know who you're talking to right now? Do you know? Do you no. have any idea who you're talking to right now? Do you? No. You don't have any idea. You've never heard of me. No. Then why are you talking to me? What is this? You, you sound know. like a man, but you look like a machine. 
No, I... A giggly not... machine with nothing to say, you bore me. Oh. True performance art from yours. Okay, okay, on, on the screen, there was a there was instructions that say, do not say yes, and I panicked. And the first thing you did? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I know. I it while I was watching it. At first, I didn't know it was you, but as, as I kept hearing your voice, I'm like, oh no. Oh no, this is good, <laughs> isn't it? This color is man. And then sure enough, <laughs> as soon as you started kind of giggling and Cricket started going after you, I knew, oh my God, it's Pan. And that he was panicking because of the entire message that had just come up because I had seen that. <laughs> Pan was panicking. Thought, okay, so they're trying to guide us now. And then as soon as you get on, you, you start <laughs> doing the, the, the complete contrary thing to the message. But it was a thing of beauty to see you on there. I'm like, I know, like she was asking like, do you know who I am? And I'm like, I can't say yes. So it's like, no, sure. You're, you're cricket. You're in the... <laughs> so it's like I don't know what to respond with. Like I can't confirm that I know who she is. So I'm just like, no. It's like I thought they were gonna hang up on me if I say yes. I would have. I would have said, do you know who I am? Just to fuck <laughs> oh with them. shit, yeah. Fuck. It was great. It, it was great though, fan. Because out of that, we got we got the the line from cricket. You are a giggling machine. <laughs> 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 and I'm never gonna forget that one. That could be laughing or it could be crying. That's that's up for the audience to interpret. Actually, I'm drawing exactly what face you were making right now. <laughs> so. I mean, my little niece Nicholas also got on, but she she lasted a lot longer on there. She did good. She she did good. We we've been watching it um, live as it happens. Uh, I I've been watching it and checking in with actually Pat and Nicholas as things have been going on and talking about it a little bit to Nolan as well. In in between all the insanity of getting my Halloween video worked on, it's a good time. Uh, Web City always produces really crazy unexpected stuff, and when they announced that they were doing a live and interactive piece on Adult Swim streams. I had no idea what to think. Could have been hmm. legitimately anything, but this concept is seriously brilliant, and there are so many yeah. levels to it. Like I'm, I'm already dreading the headache that I'm going to have trying to figure this thing out at the end. <laughs> the, yeah, the cry of man. That's what it was called, cry of man, but with two ends on man. Wham City is this the? Were they the ones that also made the uninterrupted footage of a bear? Unedited Only footage, of, footage a bear. of a bear. Um, they also did this house has people in it. Oh, God. The Mirror and uh, Alan Resnick, who is from the group, did Alan Tutorial. And as I'm mentioning that, of course, I'm also remembering the very first thing that they put together for Adult Swim, which is Live River As You Are Now with Alan Resnick, where Alan plays a different character with his same name and identity. <laughs> did they also do Too Many Cooks or is that somebody else? No, that was somebody else. Okay. Uh, it, it was awesome that Too Many Cooks came out right before unedited footage of a bear. Because those two together really cemented Adult Swim as this kind of force for pushing abstract art projects <laughs> into the mainstream. So yeah, I, I made it onto an Adult Swim product. I think they'll I, this was online only, but I, I'm sure they're gonna they're gonna play it on TV at 3 a.m. sometime. It would be really cool if they did. I'm because I don't think they want to have a, a call-in show on TV because they're afraid someone's gonna say something terrible. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly my thoughts behind why it's on the streaming because I know that the relationship with Adult Swim is good enough that they can go ahead and be on the air for late night slots. But the entire factor of, you know, it being improv and callers coming in and not being able to fully screen the calls, I'm thinking that they just had to go with online first. Yeah. Plus you get that awesome reaction of the chat on the side and the things that they've been doing playing with characters in the chat, mm -hmm. which is something that some people might not be familiar with. If you watch the archive streams on the site, I'm not sure if the chat is going to play alongside it, if they recorded the chat, but they have characters from the show popping up in the chat to kind of guide viewers on what's happening. The two spirit characters, specifically Ghost Lady and the villain, who is apparently called Jurjiev. Nobody really knows what his deal is, but... I've been keeping track of all the things that he's been saying. Mm -hmm. Again, I, I've got such a headache already <laughs> thinking about trying to unravel this thing when it's all done. It's like there's no there's no damn rest for the wicked. <laughs> Not I can't I can't sit back as soon as I'm done with the Halloween stuff. No, I've got a giant Wham City product to unravel again. That's going to be about as complicated as this <laughs> house's people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I usually just kind of wait for you to um have the Wham City comedy stuff. So I might have an aneurysm this time, Nolan. I might not even be able to deliver it to you because I'll just die at the computer from all this. Nick, Nick, you're a paranormal four-eyed cat. You have like probably uh, 18 lives. 
because you have double sets of eyes. So yeah, yeah, true. Every, oh yeah. Um, by the way, everybody, Nick Nocturne is a cat and also a furry. So hey, if, if you I, would, li- I am if, physically furry. If you would like to send any furry porn to Nick uh, Nocturne, his Twitter is at nm underscore Nocturne. Oh oh, hot dog. <laughs> Everywhere except physically, I am a wolf. <laughs> on, on all levels except physical? On all levels, yeah. <laughs> what? He just sparks oh. at the lake. Yeah. He, he, <laughs> that's hilarious. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, 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 need to fi- I need to find art of Nick's uh, persona now, so I'm going to draw that on stream. I guess, uh, should we talk about Jorge and say, ask him what he's, who he is? Yeah, uh, Jorge, what do you do? Like, like, what do you do, you know? Uh, I talk about spooky stuff and cartoons, ranging from forgotten characters, lost media, um, similar to Nick, but uh, a bit more lighthearted, I would say. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. everything I do, people are like, "Oh, you say it's so creepy. You had such a creepy vibe." I'm like, "I'm sorry, guys. I'm just trying to make a video." Spooky, spooky, scary skeletons. By the way, it's nice to I meet you. Really I've um, heard about you around every now and then, so it's actually kind of nice to to meet you. Yeah, same, same. I mean, there, there's a lot of people who always show up in comment section, you know, talking about other YouTubers in the horror scene that they love. So you see yeah. a lot of names, even if you haven't been able to stop and watch the content. See, that's the thing, is that you always hear about other people. I'm, I'm sure you've got this experience, but you're oh, so yeah. busy making content that you don't have time to watch your peers. Yeah, <laughs> for, for pretty much. Yeah. Hmm. So Especially when there's like so many of us. Yeah, there are. It's, it's kind of it's kind of nuts. And, and there's also the fact that you don't want to see somebody's content in the idea that they might have already covered something that you think you just found. And you don't want to kind of infect your, infect your brain with everything that they said, because it might show up in your own writing and then you'll feel awful yeah it's funny i've seen other people cover stuff that i've already talked about sometimes they say like no one has ever talked about this and um it, it's a weird thing and you're in your head you're like i'm like i just can't think about it leaving my life yeah because <laughs> part of me like whenever i'm doing a video i'm like is someone else gonna do this this is this thing before i am I, I gotta i gotta be the first one and i never get around to yeah doing when it. you did obscure cartoon eric shows i was like damn it yay now i can't do it for like a year <laughs> I think there was something you did. I was like, damn, I can't do that. Lost Cartoon Network. So that's like my way of doing it. Maybe. I think. Yeah. One of, I think that's what I what it was. <laughs> Probably because it was it also had um CGI show. That was like the first show. But oh, yeah. The, Cartoon Network barely recognizes the stupid it. Mo- d- dog that nobody liked. Um, um, I had like three names. Uh, the Moxie show with the. Yes. The Moxie Flea. show. The Moxie and Flea show. Yeah. And like Cartoon Network does not care about that at all. For some reason. They don't even recognize it. Like what's what the what's Cartoon Everyone's problem. They just said, you know what? We'll, we'll recognize Dexter and Power Puff, but we won't recognize the Moxie show ever. Fuck them. And Ben 10 dabbing. Yeah. Oh. Always. There's, no, there's nothing. Yeah, there's a few people missing from that anniversary kind of animatic that they did. No shame in dabbing. Mm. Quite a Semi- few. Titan, perhaps. Yeah, this is freaking Cartoon Network's birth, 25th Whoop, birthday. Bingo card. Symbiotic Titan. We got it. Yeah, I mean, I gotta. I gotta do it. Oh, God. Somebody in, somebody in chat, Jason, JJ17, they don't recognize Mike Lou and Og. Pan, do you remember when you made that fake Mike Lou and Og reboot poster? Oh, yeah. And you know, we got like 100 notes. Uh-huh. Uh, that's how was, well, that was when I was not popular, but 100 notes at the time was pretty big for me. I was like, wow. No, that, that, that was like 2014, wasn't that it? That was like early. Hang on. That was quite a while ago. Yeah. Nobody cares about Mike Lewinog, but I made a fake ass poster saying new episodes. Oh, I found it. See this. 2012, November 14th. Said someone out there was like, yeah, I want new episodes of Mike Lewinog. And, <laughs> you know. Nolan is currently drawing me on the on the stream, and I look kind of like I've been influenced by Sly Cooper, and I fucking have four eyes. Yeah, he has four eyes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I maximum death oh, perception. Jesus, I really laced about his um his facial proportions, but I think it looks funnier that way. <laughs> it is it is funnier that way. I've kind of got some eyes drifting. I probably just came back from shape shifting back into my default form. <laughs> it's just so, like it's sliding down, like sliding down. I, I gotta take a look at a mirror and like take two seconds to adjust my face. Yeah, but look, Mike Lewinog, fuck that show. Can I? Uh, 
can I share something with you guys? We were talking about why, um, like, they're not going to take phone calls live because people might, you know, screw around and, <laughs> and say something messed up. Yeah. And uh, it reminded me of this clip. I'm just going to throw it onto the chat. <laughs> I saw it a long time ago. I'm still laughing about it now. <laughs> it's public access, so of course people are going to screw with it. Oh. Just listen to it. Um, keep taking your calls. Let's see. Try line number one. Josh's movie review. Who's this? Is this a new show? This is a new show. Yeah, today is the first episode. How am I doing? Brand new? Yeah, brand new, dude. You're watching oh, the I first one. Do this, brother. It's your first episode. Come in my mouth. No. <laughs> no. Classic. <laughs> oh. <God>. oh. <laughs> Just no. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, that was just that guy knew exact that guy sounds like he's wanted to do that for two years he, he saw the, the opportunity he just went I mean, for what it would, I mean, I, I was, I, has anything like that happened so far on the cry of man no no that's the shocking thing with cry of man as soon as they kind of announced what they were doing and made it clear that people would be calling in who were viewers to kind of be live on the show, I was instantly worried. I'm like, oh my God, please guys, no fucking memes, no memes, no memes. Don't screw with it. Roll with it. Everybody has been good. Everybody's been playing along, which is amazing. Thank Christ. Those streams only have like barely 2000 viewers. So I guess it's like a small concentrated group of people watching it. Yeah, but at the same time, you, you can always get somebody bad in the punch. I was worried about that myself when I made the video announcement, just kind of telling my, my own uh, viewership it was happening to get the word out. Is that, okay, I'm putting this on blast now, so please, please yeah. don't screw this up. <laughs> no. And everybody's also, been really well behaved. Also, in addition to a poorly drawn neck, I did a poorly <laughs> drawn Jorge. Oh, hold on. I got to see this. Yeah. <laughs> Why do they blame it on every, every video? Some, some guys, I blame it man, on you. Man, make, that, make that the, um, the icon we will. for, for this video in the, in the upper left. I will, man. I will. It's, instead of, uh, instead of pan doing like really nice renditions of us, it's just me drawing all Crude. the icons. Send me that later on. I will. Yeah. I'm going to draw myself next. So, so you'll have, um, me and Jorge as drawn by Pan on the right, and then as drawn by <laughs> Nolan on the upper left. But yeah. uh, blame it on Jorge. Do you, what's uh if, for someone who hasn't seen your videos? Which video would you recommend? I always ooh, recommend. I'll uh, let's Pixar ripoffs because you're in it, so I would recommend that one. It's cheeky, oh, nothing creepy that's... about it. We were just mm -hmm. making fun of some bad movies. I deserve to be made fun of. <laughs> and every now and then I get somebody like tweeting me a picture of um, uh, the Cars ripoff. I can't remember the name because I don't want to remember. But, Little Cars? Hey, I found this cars in my life. library. Yeah, Cars Live. I, I found this in my library. I found this at Walmart. And I just. I know there's back, Little Cars and Cars Go. Yeah, Cars Go too. Uh, so I would recommend that video just for some clean fun before you get to the. Um, some Ooh, of the do you have a video upcoming? Hmm, quite a few. Quite a few videos upcoming. Got anything coming out on the big day? On which big day? Uh, well, what's the next video you got? For, well, <laughs> today for anybody who's who's viewing on on the Rebel Taxi channel, because today is Halloween. Well, I'm sort of juggling a, a couple of projects. We're doing Pokemon knockoffs, uh, saddest or darkest season finales, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was one more I had in mind. I can't remember. Oh, songs and kid shows. That's gonna be fun. I'm really excited for that one. Good songs or bad songs. Good songs, like best songs. I'm tr I'm excited for that. I'm excited for the nostalgia trip. And uh, Nick Nocturne, your channel, w what do you have upcoming? Uh, well, I just released the sequel to my SCP Vault video, um, SCP Vault 2. That's, uh, that was a lot of labor. That, that That's the first video that I've done since Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, where I've fought to have as much original footage as possible, and it was an endeavor um by the time that this goes up on your channel pan for the rest of the viewers i should have monster hunt 2 out so that's the sequel to last year's monster hunt of course and tonight on halloween night i'll have candy ball featuring a very special premiere by a creator that uh, is extremely talented possibly two Ooh. possibly two ooh, ooh, one ooh, of ooh, which ooh. i think that people will be extremely excited to see and if they don't premiere tonight they will premiere soon i'll may i'll make a one-off video kind of showing it because their work is uh, mm -hmm. you guys are gonna flip <laughs> you guys are gonna flip when you get it 
I'm gonna flip my shit. I love flipping. Yeah, but for me, the next video it's gonna be the finally the giant Robo the anime this '90s anime that that was part of the Patreon review raffle. And by then, I'm gonna completely revamp the Patreon review things completely because it's like it hasn't really been updated since like it was first made like two years ago, I believe. Yeah, and I and I had to come and be like, okay, let's fix this shit. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, look, I want to get to three thousand. That way, if it makes it to three thousand, that means I can do the Tony Hawk videos again because it's like those don't make any viewers at all compared to my cartoon videos since there's a lot of car there's not that many cartoon videos but there's too many uh video game videos so that's why i don't do the tony hawk thing i love i love the tony hawk video specifically my favorite one of yours um was the last one you did on the tony hawk film uh the the animated boom, boom, sabotage have to rescue him from from a circus fucking clowns the, the, the clowns yeah where tony hawk is kidnapped by clowns and every opportunity they get along the way to save him where they could just stop and skate around they take it <laughs> you, you, you killed it with that video it's, that's I, I, I wish tony hawk was in more cartoons and stuff like I, just the extreme era of things it was just always terrible like oh god do you that video i made the top five celebrity cartoons that were never made the lost ones you know Mm -hmm. Okay, originally I was, I kind of just like went for it and didn't really think about like what the video is going to be. So I was like, as I was writing it, I was still debating like, is this going to be worst celebrity cartoons ever or worst lost cartoons? And eventually I figured out enough lost cartoons, celebrity cartoons. But there is a part that I wrote that I never filmed or anything was the one where I talk about the Tony Hawk appearance in Rocket Power. And it's like that part of the script is complete, but I have nowhere to put it since it's not long enough for its own episode. Oh, sorry. Jesus Christ. Can you hear him? I was, sorry, I was hiccuping. The I'm spirit fine of now. Tony Hawk is currently choking him. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, it's Tony. It's the true Hawk. Halloween curse of Tony Hawk. Yeah. Go to hell, Tony. But, um, you guys want to get into the news? What's that? Do we want to see your nudes? No! News. I have them right here. Everybody. <laughs> oh, oh, guys, you, oh, you, oh, no! Here's some real news for us. Oh, man. Fancy All right. nudes. We've got them. We hey, finally got them. News. This is CNN. Dora the Explorer is going to be a movie for theaters produced by Michael Bay, of all people. I don't understand, but okay. I can't yeah, wait to see who Dora else would... level an entire village for the sake of her map. I can't wait till the whole movie is all grimy and sweaty. All the characters are sweaty and there's like weird greenish blue tint on everything with some orange lighting on everything. I hate that. And Swiper is <laughs> just a giant like monster fox. Yeah, I mean... Swiper! No, Swiper! Pe people are joking, like, this is gonna be, like, Tomb Raider or something, but I'm trying to Swiper imagine... Swiper is actually an alien, and he's come to steal from the entire Earth. Oh, yeah, I remember when the Team and T Michael Bay movie was coming out, they were saying, hey, we're gonna turn them into aliens instead, instead of mutants, for oh, some reason. Oh, I remember that, and Nostalgia Critic had, like, a huge, like, rant about it. Which was like, why? Yeah, that was strange. I mean, like, um, first off, it was in the name, but they, they chose not to do that in the end. And like even in the first Michael Bay movie, they made fun of that facts. They, they made they had some line that commented on like aliens and saying how ridiculous that idea was. And uh, I guess they realized, yeah, that's a dumb idea. Let's not do that. I don't know why, but um, just to be different. When Michael Bay started getting kind of wise to himself and started poking fun at himself in his films like that. Then I'd start to get a little bit of respect for him, just a little bit though. Just a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit. Not a lot. How would this Dora movie even work? Is it just going to be like Spy Kids it's like or something? Deadpool, where he breaks the fourth wall and just talks. To the audience shit you're right dora is the dora is the deadpool of nick jr yeah oh, God. Oh, God. if they, if they, they approach the door next one of the people in the seats for like five seconds and wait for him to call back like it's a rocky horror picture show <laughs> <laughs> All the kids oh. are losing their damn minds. Wow, that, that's why Deadpool is so popular. It's because he talks like Dora the Explorer to a bunch of weirdos online. That explains it. One talks to children, the other talks to man children. <laughs> I re I really I really like the idea of Dora being like a Deadpool. Like, <laughs> I was just joking. <laughs> now it's like you blew my mind because it's like shit that's true oh my god so it's basically just a preschool show for adults that's what deadpool is 
Michael Bay's watching this and he's like, that's brilliant. And then that's what it becomes. But um, Michael Bay, he's done like kids movies before he did that. No, wait, no, wait, that was Zack Snyder. He did that owl movie. Never mind. <laughs> Fuck. Imagine uh, Zack Snyder super pretentious like he is about the super he's about Guardians of Gahul. Oh, yeah. No, everybody forgot about the Guardians of Gahul, Zack Snyder's CGI owl movie. Did anyone see that? I did not see that. Uh, you lost me. It was about owls and they're the Guardians of Gahul. <laughs> I'm I'm just being on this article. It was in slow half the movie was in slow motion and it's rainy all the time. Oh, that's great. Typical superhero movies. Nick Nocturne, did you read this article? The one that says Megan Fox's lowest point in her career when she was fired by Michael Bay. Yeah, apparently this just went up two days ago. Megan what? Fox felt like a martyr when Michael Bay fired her from the third installment of Transformers. What's a martyr? He got the boot from the franchise after claiming the filmmaker, I quote, wants to be like Hitler on his sets in an interview with Wonderland magazine in 2009. She says, that was absolutely the low point of my career, but without that thing, I wouldn't have learned as quickly as I did. All I had to do was apologize, and I refused. I was so self-righteous at 23, I couldn't see that it was for the greater good. I really thought I was Joan of Arc. <laughs> she really thought that she was Joan of Arc by... That she was a person then, yeah. <laughs> by crusading against Michael Shit. Yeah. Shit. So all for that Hitler jokes, like, I'm gonna be the Joan of Arc of Hitler jokes, and... She's like, yeah, that was dumb. Let me look at uh, what Megan Fox has been up to besides Ninja Turtles and uh, T Transformers. Uh, she was in Jonah Hex, a classic DC film. Mm, yeah. Oh, oh, the movie Jennifer's Body where she was like a demon and she ate out a bunch of people, I think, or something. Nice. But nice I remember. Nice. Uh, okay. Nice I, rem I remember the interview by the lady who directed that movie and also the shitty Aeon Flux movie. There were, she talked about how the response to Jennifer's body was really weird because she was like mad like, why do so many guys like the idea of this movie? Why do they like the idea of being killed by a hot girl? I don't understand. <laughs> I read that the other day. I can't even remember where it came from, but I saw, actually, it might have been from you sharing something about it on, on Tumblr or Twitter. But yeah, I, I was thinking about that the other day. Jennifer's body is this weird anomaly of horror. Kind of reminds you of like the existence of Suicide Squad as a movie in the DC universe. You remember it happens, but then you forget so quickly that you're shocked every time you remember it exists. <laughs> okay, okay, but Nick, Academy winning Suicide Squad. Yeah, yeah, oh, you, can, you can't yeah. forget that. Somebody, somebody got paid off, and you know it. Yeah, well, 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 no, well, well some guy in the production team was like, "Ha! I told you I did good." Well, no, not even that. But there, there were like people who worked on Suicide Squad who were government. So. <laughs> What? I, that's what I think, at least. There was a producer or something in Suicide Squad who got, like, put into Trump's cabinet because they knew each other. <laughs> we live in a dystopia. This America is a dystopia. Yeah, world's fucked. That, bring, that brings me to a point that, that I wanted to, um, I don't know, ever, ever since things have been going off the rails and I was invited to the podcast, it just kind of, I added it as, as another factor of something I call the 2017 effect, where I don't know if you guys know, but this year is kind of proven that we're on the darkest timeline Line. The planetary alignment is completely out of whack. Reality is broken. 2017 is the year of the impossible. That can happen. If you want to do something, you can succeed at it no matter how crazy, insane, and stupid it is. Just go. Give it a shot. Because <laughs> awesome. all bets are on. That's like Gurren Lagan levels of inspiration. I'm... I'm, looking I'm going at, to skydive around New York. <laughs> I'm I'm, look, I'm looking at the the poster for the movie Jennifer's Body starring Megan Fox, and it's like her dress is just floating there. Like she's supposed to be sitting on a desk, but her dress is just like completely wrong. It just it looks like <laughs> they just pasted her over a completely different image. Like it's the worst Photoshop <laughs> show I've ever seen. Like the picture of Ariana Grande on the stool. <laughs> well, yeah, yes, yeah, like I that. I heard about that. Speaking of terrible posters from 2011, hang on. She's out of my league. Let me find this one poster for this one movie. Uh, was it with the nerd guy from uh, How to Train Your Dragon? Okay, yeah. This poster fucking pisses me off. Look, Nolan, post this in the chat or in the stream or something. This the the, the poster to the movie um she's out of my league. Like it looks like the guy's face is being like absorbed into this woman. Is that Jay Bruchel? Yeah, that's that how to train your dragon guy. Wow. He okay. really can't get any good work, can he? Why is his yeah, eyes? It's off center. Hold so on, guys. Off immediately. And yeah, I, I was just about to mention what you said. The eyes. What happened? He's Ooh, a what the hell? <laughs> that, that, this reminds me of the Adam Sandler face brush thing. I mean, the face softening thing, except 
It's like they photoshopped his eye away. What happened to his fucking face? People look up She's Out of My League, the movie poster. <laughs> it's just. Uh, well, I don't understand. This has always bugged me for the longest time. I don't know what the movie's about, really, but it's just like this part always horrified me. Just the fa- zoom up on his <laughs> face. Well, his eyes really are disconcerting. Yeah, she's out. She's out of his league. Yeah, but um, you guys want to get into the next news? I don't know, Ben. Do you feel ready to go into the next bit of news? We got anyone? No, there's a Unikitty TV show. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, Unikitty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Unikitty. It finally aired. It's airing, and it's Tara Strong. She plays a, a loud, quirky character, because she hasn't done anything, because that's all... How exciting and original Tara for Tara Strong's Strong. the only voice actor... I have never seen her do something WB, like that WB, there's other voice actors besides Tara Strong in existence. Yeah, name one of them. Uh, uh, Gray Delisle, Gray Griffin. Yeah, but I was watching like they were marathoning Samurai Jack yesterday, and I realized like there is only three voice actors in this whole thing. There's like Phil Lamar's Jack. There's um Tara Strong as half the women, and <laughs> Gray Delisle as all the other women, and then there's Tom Kenny. That's there's only four people and, in the show. And Alec, uh, who does uh, places Mako's voice actor. Oh, and I, uh, yeah, Marcus, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's literally five voice actors in this entire thing. You gotta save money. But yeah, Unikitty. Has anyone seen the Unikitty show? No, but I know a friend of mine works on it. What? Yeah, I don't. I don't talk with him much though. But oh, yeah. Is she somebody that um, you retweeted when they, uh, is it this guy who was super excited that he's working on the show and he was kind of sharing the news all around on Twitter? Yeah, that was him. That was him. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what I remembered as soon as you mentioned Unikitty Pan was that I saw on Twitter, somebody retweeted on, I guess now we know it was Nolan, that this dude was super excited that he just (laughs) got a job in animation working on Unikitty. And it's like, you know. No matter what show it is, that is always exciting for somebody. So, good is he a fan of the podcast? He could be on. Uh, I maybe. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know if he's listened. I think he might oh. know of me. I don't know. I like the visuals of the show a lot. Like just, <laughs> I don't know. Just I just like how it looks. It kind of does feel like My Little Pony meets Teen Titans Go in a way. Ah, uh, is this it? They all look like boxes. Yeah, they're they're bo- well, they are based on Legos, so Oh. Uh, Although what's weird is uh Lego also has a TV show on Netflix called Lego Elves or Fairies or whatever it was, and it doesn't look like Legos at all. It just looks like the Voltron anime style. <laughs> and it's like, why is the Lego name even on this? That's gotta be like the worst Lego to step on considering her horn. Oh god. Like ah! Yeah. I know also uh in the Unikitty show, Baby Metal does the intro theme, which I'm wondering if there's a full version. Baby Metal do the intro theme? Yeah. Oh my god. It goes la 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 and it's basically that. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Baby metal, so no one's seen it, but okay, next bit of news. Cause uh on top of on top on the discussion of WB animation, uh Teen Titans Go is going to the movies. We this was announced forever ago, but we're announcing it here. Mm-hmm. Teen Titans go to the movies, cause uh on July something, they're making Teen Titans Go a theatrical film, and it's coming out the same weekend as the emoji movie. <laughs> <laughs> you mean God. the emoji movie too? Damn the emoji movie. Well, well, the Emoji movie of the previous year. There's no second. Oh. There's no sequel announced yet. So basically that weekend is now cursed. <laughs> yeah. You know, like February, we got all the cool comic book movies like Lego Batman or Kingsman or Deadpool. Mm-hmm. And July, we got all the shitty animated movies like that. So January for the graveyard of horror movies and July for the graveyard of everything else that is normally supposed to be good. Got it. Yeah. And February, all the good comic book movies. On the uh, official poster they released, uh, they have Will Arnett on the name on there. And um, it's it's very likely that Will Arnett will play a Batman in the movie, I'm assuming. (laughs) Probably. I'd be be willing to bet. Will Arnett isn't doing anything. Yeah, although uh, what's weird is like... Around 2008, during those noob, those bowling pin bumpers Cartoon Network we used to have, I played one during the uh, Total Drama Island review, like I showed a bumper for that, and a lot of people said, is that Will Arnett's voice doing the bumpers for that? 
I guess he did bumpers for Cartoon Network at one point. I don't know. I get a lot of love for Will Arnett. He's, uh, I mean, ever, ever since he started doing BoJack, he's he's really blown up. Yeah, I think he was, all, well, he was already pretty big, but I guess BoJack kind of cemented him in TV. Well, besides Arrested Development, yeah. Mm. Hmm. But uh, t- is anyone excited for Teen Titans Go to the movies? Somebody they should put Teen Titans in the DCU. In the chat just said, I hope for millennials to form an anti-Teen Titans Go protest in theaters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's yes. like, that's like I, I, millennialism. Well, see, see, this is scheduled for what, Pan, 2018 or 19? Yeah, next year. Next year. So, oh, no, good. we're going to be out of the 2017 range. Therefore, it cannot happen unless the 2017 effect bleeds into 2018 in which case we really are in a trilogy year see i have another theory (laughs) (laughs) it's 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 actually related to the star wars ring theory okay so 2016 was the first movie or episode four right now we are in episode five which is why shit is even crazier right now and then the trilogy will complete in 2018 and then we'll be safe and everything will be normal again Yay. You just gotta wait for it. We just gotta survive. As it was foretold in the prophecy. Mm-hmm. And Nick and Nick's the fears prophecy of Darth Vader. Vader. You can't buy that. <laughs> yeah, probably. I announced on my Tumblr saying the Teen Titans Go movie, if this does not get a higher Rotten Tomato score than Batman v Superman, I will dip my balls in Szechuan sauce and paint a canvas with it. <laughs> nice. Dude, so, that's so edgy. Look. Honestly, it's probably going to get a higher Rotten Tomato score than Batman v Superman. What's um, Batman v Superman at? Like 19%, I think? <laughs> Jesus. Superman v Bat- Batman, Rotten Tomatoes. Teen like, Titans should be in sure. the DCU. That'd be cool. it, it really will be hysterical if Teen Titans Go actually succeeds in, in better quality than most of the D- DC Universe stuff. Except Wonder Woman, because Wonder Woman was actually awesome. Yeah. Tw- 27%. Okay, so if if uh, Teen Titans Go makes it to 27% or below, I have to do it. I got stuff. 27% or above. The My Little Pony movie got lambasted, and that was a legitimate movie, so... Wait, 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 what? <laughs> what did it get? I went to go see the My Little Pony movie as a joke, and I wound up really unironically enjoying it. And I'm not even like a brony, so... I mean, the Rod- the My Little Pony movie got a 44%, so that, that wow. beat Batman v Superman, so there's hope. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's hope. My Little Pony beat Batman and Superman in the first <laughs> in their movie together for the first time. Yeah, it's going to happen, so people, just wait for it. Like, I know, like, I have faith in this movie. No, I, well, honestly, this movie will probably be shitty, but it won't be as shitty as Batman v Superman, because, like, Batman v Superman was, like, three hours long, and this will be, like, 90 minutes, so that automatically makes it a lot more tolerable. Well, it's a Teen Titans Go movie, so it's going to be shitty no matter what, but yeah, 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 I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'll be hopeful for it's you, gonna... I'll be hopeful. I want to be nice, because I like, I really like the, the, the couple who um, are related to the show by, by working on it. Zatch, right? Or Zach? No, uh, Zach, Zach and Tara. <laughs> Pam just yeah. pronounced it Zatch because he's stupid and illiterate. I thought it was like Zatch Bell. Like, I don't Why know. Why would somebody from America be named Zatch? I don't, it sounds like an American enough name. Zatch, Zach, close enough. That's not yeah. even. I don't know. But, but yeah, Zach and Tara, I really like that. And I love the, what they're doing with um their their animated pilot. And when they were on the podcast and also, you know, what he does each year for his candy coated cackles. So I want to be nice. But every time I see Teen Titans go, I just... Mm, I'm sure the cast well, he's will be not fine. On I just don't know how it will be as like a movie movie. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> how can they search this 15-minute uh, plotless show into 90 minutes? We'll find out how hard it'll suck. Yeah. <laughs> 90 minutes? 90 minutes of waffles. I mean, it's called oh, Teen Titans God. Go to the Movies. How, how about Teen Titans Go to the Polls? <laughs> I already Man, made that joke when I did when I did the movies thing earlier. Shit, fuck. Okay. I really yeah. wish I really wish Hillary Clinton would like she's seen her trying to like like you cut out. Up. <laughs> really I've heard bad. of Pokemon Go. How about Pokemon Go to the polls? Nolan, you cut out. Oh shit. Um I was saying I really wish Hillary Clinton did name stuff because seeing her try to relate to millennials is hilarious. Yeah, that stuff was funny. It's like watching like a secret super villain try to be like it's like that Aku episode where he's trying to like indoctrinate the kids. <laughs> like Ted Cruz even acknowledged the Zodiac Killer meme. Yeah. 
Oh. This is, <laughs> That's we truly really live in a dark dystopia where, like, Lex Luthor and uh, I don't know what the Hillary Clinton Clinton supervillain equivalent would be, but that, that's what happened in 2016 and 2017 is continuing that. We're just going- Who's a female? My favorite, my favorite Clinton meme um, following, following the election was that people were going along the lines of saying that she would become uh, a character from Metal Gear Solid now, and they, and they showed a picture of her in an all-black suit, and they put the caption, Punished Clinton. Of <laughs> <laughs> there was a Hang on. a photo of and this is an old 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 meme of a uh, harambe right before he got shots uh saying listen kid i have information that will um incarcerate hillary clinton <laughs> then, uh, i, I saw that one too yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> oh look she can be uh, okay trump's lex luther and uh um hillary can be granny goodness from superman the animated series <laughs> Perfect. Okay. As if anyone remembers that character. I do. live in a universe where there are no actual superheroes, so everyone is fucked. Yeah. We're all fucked. Well, I'm sure there's several of those videos that say real life superheroes and they're like people with like stupid powers like can see three more colors than the average human or something. Hmm. You know, there has to be someone out there who has a mildly useful power, you know. So you guys want to get into more news? I mean, I guess. I don't think we have a choice. All right. We're kind, sure. of, just, the last, we're kind of trapped here. And the last bit of news, Chris Savino got... Should we even do this one? Well, we'll you just acknowledge it because people expect now. us to. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, Chris Savino got uh, fired for harassing women and doing all these sleazy things behind the scenes. The creator of The Loud House got fired for doing all these things. Jesus, think, man. Well, we talk, we, we talk about a lot about... Uh, we, we'll just mention the darker stuff that happens, but we don't like, I don't know. It feels like really ton. It feels like our taste. If we make jokes about that type of stuff, like we'll make fun of Chris Savino because he's truly pathetic. Um, we actually earlier in the podcast pre-show recorded uh, a reading of Chris Savino public <laughs> reading his uh, letter to the public. So we're going to play that recording right now. We'll edit it in post. So, Okay. Yeah, um, for all those who want an apology from Chris Savino, here's the recording. I am deeply sorry and ashamed. Although it was never my intention, I now understand that the impact of my actions communications created an unacceptable environment. At every stage of my career, I have sought to uplift my colleagues and cultivate a culture of respect. In this objective, I have failed. I should have known better. I should have acted better. And this has been difficult, but a valuable lesson. I have nothing but the deepest respect for the bravery of the women who have spoken out, trying to create an environment in which they can thrive to their fullest potential. 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 You know, I, I thought that was very heartfelt. It was a very brave thing to do. <laughs> I genuinely, I, you know, in spite of the fact that he harassed coworkers for decades, I feel as though, like that letter, he really, he really got his point across very professionally, yeah. very gracefully. You know, very so. professional. God, I mean, like, I'm tired of people making apology letters and they're always the most lawyer friendly version. You know, it's mm -hmm. just like if a company fucks up, it's always like blank company strives to make the best. <laughs> and in this situation, we have failed you in this. And it's like, I'm tired of just like so of these like artificial apologies. Like we need someone to just like come out on camera and just like start bawling and crying and saying, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Manson went down recently, um, actually just this past week for the same stuff. Like he had a whole bunch of women come out against him all at once. Hmm. And uh, there were letters from both his camp and Marilyn Manson's camp uh, basically saying that, yeah, he's out. And his letters kind of reflected the fact of him saying, yeah, I totally did it. I'm guilty. And there's nothing else I can really say except sorry because it was extremely polite legal language. It just every everybody it all seems to be coming out of the woodwork lately. Makes make it yeah. kind of gave me a thought the other day of I really hope that everything everybody that this has happened to just it all comes out at once right now so we can just have it out because this seems to happen every few months and it's just painful. 
I, th- I, I think the reason why I think the reason why it's all coming out of this was Sting. So he's he was he's like huge, like like in terms of like the uh, background stuff he does. He uh, once he got caught, it's like oh wow, the biggest figurehead in Hollywood. Well, wasn't there also someone like before him, like um, someone from Screw Attack, I think, or something? Maybe I don't know. I haven't heard. That. I, I heard about some sexuality. I can't remember who. And then the Harvey Weinstein yeah. happened because of what happened there. And then more women started speaking out because they kind of grouped up and felt not alone. Oh no, it wasn't. It was not Screw Attack. No, Screen Junkies. Oh. It was Screen Junkies. There we go. Yeah, Cross Ranks at Screen Junkies, and also Mister in the chat has dubbed this the Weinstein effect. And I think we should all yeah. uh, we should yeah. all commemorate Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> No, there's Steve's people snowball effect okay if if you guys remember my review on the movie Dougal, that cg movie <laughs> Ooh, but um th- th- in the beginning of the video i was like th- this movie was brought over to america by the weinsteins i have no idea who they are really they just make a bunch of crappy art films and i just play like clips of random celebrities making jokes about the weinsteins and like john stewart saying stuff like harvey weinstein came to me and said do this movie and I fear him, as most people do. And it's like, oh, oh fuck. Oh, man, the hindsight. That's, uh... Yeah. That, yeah, hi- but, the hindsight is always like 2020, and it's so bad when you see someone say something, and you're like, oh, they were warning us. Yeah, have you guys oh. seen the Courtney Love? Um, on- I was just about to, I was just thinking of that. Yeah. What's that? Usually that was like from 2004, Love- I think. Usually, Courtney Love, when whenever she says something, people just ignore her because it's Courtney Love, and she's yeah, got ah, she's crazy, insane. But uh, uh-huh. wow, yeah, no, this was one of those times where Courtney Love said something completely true, and we should have listened. And you know, maybe it was years we ago. Go back in time and look at how many things Courtney Love has tried to warn us about. What Courtney Love say? Yeah. She was just warning us about Harvey Weinstein, about he was like a bad guy. Don't be alone with him or something. Yeah. And it was like 2004, 2006. It was it was quite a while ago. Damn, I'm just waiting for like I I don't think it's we should legally say who, but like I know some Nickelodeon producer. Like he, I'm I'm hoping he's next. Like oh, fucking get him. Yeah, the man with the big white van. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what we we'll call rough, him. The yeah, rough rider, as it were. Yeah. <laughs> Like likes to ride her the foot fucker, um, foot fucker, <laughs> butt bouncer. Yeah, we'll, we're waiting for him, and also someone else, some other cartoon person. Just like, hey, come on, I know that guy's a fucking <laughs> sleazy. I saw that DVD feature with him in it, but you know, like, uh, people are saying, like, is the Loud House canceled? It's like. I don't think so. There's a lot of people who work on these animation shows, so it's like it's not just him working on it. It's it's a group effort, so you know. There's a lot of people that work on cartoons, so you know. Yeah, the the, you know. the 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 cartoon world as a whole is still pretty clean. We hope. Yeah, and also the show is pretty successful, and Nickelodeon's like, "Hey, this this beats SpongeBob. We're not <laughs> we're not losing this shit." It's doing yeah, better pretty than nice SpongeBob. Deep in it. Yeah, I mean, it's like one of the few shows that beat the SpongeBob standard. Like, like every single God, Nickelodeon show is like, oh, unless you unless you outmatch SpongeBob's ra- ratings, you're just gonna get dumped onto like Nicktoons Network or whatever. Yeah, but I guess that's all for the news. It's up yours, Savino. Well, also, when Savino was first announced, like when the news broke out, like I saw all these artists on Twitter who work in the industry like celebrating. It's like, damn, these people knew. Mm. celebrating they were just like yeah like someone posted like the the meme that says the evil has been defeated it's like damn these people knew oh wow holy crap it's like i think i think one of the one of the saddest parts i mean there's obviously the saddest part is that any of this at all happened but in in the wake of the harvey weinstein thing i i just sat there and as soon as the news broke and and it, it turned from rumor to fact overnight and everybody came out and shared their experiences i thought quentin knew quentin tarantino absolutely knew didn't he and i just sat back and i waited i felt miserable because i love quentin everybody kind of loves quentin tarantino and sure enough you know a week later he just kind of walks out of the darkness online and says yeah i'm sorry i knew what's like what can you do if you know well that's just the thing is that the weinsteins basically owned the guy they made his career but it's like, damn, Quentin, damn. Oh, geez. Yeah, he probably wouldn't say much then if they owned him. Yeah. 
It's tough. And also, it's like, it's not just him. I'm sure there'd be like some sort of contract thing where it's like, hey, we would, we'll would screw you over and all these people you work with. You know, over. That's true, it's because like, it did come out that Harvey Weinstein kind of pushed NDAs on everybody that he had interactions with to keep them shut up. Yeah, so it's like if you if so, one person were to out someone, like uh, they they won't be the only ones that would be like screwed over. Like a bunch of people they know would be screwed over. So it's like, what can they do? Yeah, it's it's really easy to hate Quentin for that, but it is a lot always a lot more complicated than it seems. Yeah, it's it's really it's really fucked up. And the worst part yes. is I don't even know if it's necessarily a uh, Hollywood thing so much as it is a bunch of people within the system because everybody acts like Hollywood is like this one huge conglomerate and there are systematic problems for sure, but it's not, everybody's like Hollywood is corrupt. I'm like, well, Hollywood isn't this one big corporate hive mind. It's a lot of like smaller systems yeah, around. That's, that's true. It's a bunch of people with power. Yeah. It's a bunch of people with power. And the worst part is you can't do much about it because like it all depends on people coming out and speaking up. But the worst part is, you know, there's just so many people with power. That's just, yeah, oh, um, Nick Spears also points out in chat, it's an American thing as well. And I wouldn't say it's necessarily American, but it's worse here than in other places, I'd say. What, since it is so powerful, or since we have a lot more powerful people here in the States in terms of not even like politically speaking, just like in terms of people who have riches and stuff like that. Because I'd say like in terms of sexual issues, like there are a lot worse, worse places like uh, Saudi Arabia or whatever. Saudi Arabia, you can marry your 10 year old way you know we don't do that so full metal alchemist full metal alchemist well it's true <laughs> no i'm just like what the no, fuck well, yeah, it's true. No, that's it's what saudi, it was my thing is super messed up and it's just like it's it's bad here but it's bad in different ways than in other places it's it's all very awful and very complicated and i feel like we shouldn't talk about this kind of heavy stuff but i'm gonna go um, oh, I just want to post on tw- <laughs> part of me wants to go on Twitter and just post to the people I know, like the the producer guy, just say, I can't oh, wait till oh, you're don't next do that. or something. Don't do it. Bad, bad. You are. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't. Oh, I mean, no. OK, well, your, your aim is for Cartoon Network, so you can go ahead and burn as many bridges at, at, at Nick as you want. But oh, no. Look, oh, OK, if OK, look, it's one of those things where it felt like if I do that, then I'll be ostracized. But once it comes out, I'll be like a hero or something, you know, just, just like, raising both your fists like I called it. I called it. People will be like, wow, Penn was was speaking the truth the whole time. I told you. I told you. All along. Yeah, I, I told you. But did you listen? No, he didn't. <laughs> but let's uh, let's get into you guys just want to get into questions. Sure. All right. Okay, so questions. If anybody has a question, be sure to post a question in the YouTube comments of this video or join us in the stream. And be sure to start out with the word question so it's easier to find. And our first question, let's go for the YouTube first. Oh, hang on. Or just see what the chat has to say. What questions do the chat have to say? Question. What video game do you think would make a good animated movie? Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog by Paramount Pictures in 2019. <laughs> Yeah, if that uh, ever comes out. Which we've been teased about for years, and I just want to see happen already. Um, at Portal. Least, okay. Oh, yeah, Portal. I would and like make it like a super science fiction-y kind of... Extreme, I would like a... I don't know. Something visual. Something insane. I would like a Portal movie remember, with Doug Ratner remember... as the protagonist. That would be sick. I remember there was this Portal short film, and the director went on to make some some movie. Some like legit Hollywood movie. Hang on. Dan Tischerberg. Dan He's done. Oh, 10 Cloverfield Lane. Oh, okay, oh yeah. I've heard of that. Well, his name is Dan Tretch Tenberg. That's his name. Yeah, he made a portal short film, and that, that got him noticed. Make it like oh, Death Note, where he just discovers the portal gun, and he's like, mm, I'm going to take over the world with this. Whoa! Yeah, but the portal gun would only work on some surfaces, so it's not that great, you know? Yeah. The, ve- the, very, the very final boss of Portal 2, where you have, where, where like, there's no more portal surfaces and the hole in the roof opens up that's the coolest shit yeah it's like the fucking moon holy shit and you just shoot the fucking moon and you just get warped Ooh, up there here's something 8 ron just brought up did you guys hear about the entirety of sonic forces being leaked yeah i did i saw the first hour of it oh i heard a bit about that not Fuck. a whole lot i i haven't seen the i haven't seen any of the end parts just the first hour sonic gets bored sonic 
So are, are these the cutscenes that have been leaked, or the, like, like the first oh. hour of gameplay and oh like cutscenes? Wow. <laughs> okay, I won't that spoil are... anything. I um, unless people, I'll keep it as spoiler free as I possibly can, unless I get consent from people. But um, the, there's a literal line in it that uh, that Knuckles says that goes, "This is war." <laughs> Oh. <laughs> and and the game is Whoa, like the, it's not it's not like sonic 06 where it's really pretentious or it's not like shadow the hedgehog either but it's definitely a lot darker because there, there's like mention of torture jesus and i won't, oh, I won't yeah. mention who or what is tortured or anybody or anything but <laughs> they just put tails on like a freaking like a chair they tie them up and then they have like uh, electric clamps on his nipples that and reminds stuff. me of a uh, thor ragnarok where mark, mark ruffalo he live streamed accidentally the first 15 minutes of the film oh no oh, how, he, uh, yeah. how? Dumbass. i don't know how but he was just live streaming and then he just left it in his pocket it was it wasn't the film it was just the audio but like like oh. a couple hundred <laughs> maybe thousand people just watched the first 15 minutes <laughs> <laughs> or listen to the first 15 minutes it's like gee I re- that's not the, it's like why would anyone want to listen to that it's just the audio yeah, give I me would. the full thing also i'd like to point out that the existence of sonic forces is yet more evidence of concern they actually made a triple a sonic game where you make a main character that is your own oc i love that oh boy i can't I, believe i want i want to say i can't believe that they did that but Man, w- with Sonic Boom and everything else that they've been doing online, it's like the, the whoever's running Sonic now really knows their fan base. So it shouldn't have come as a surprise to us, but it's still surprising that somebody actually went through with that. Can you make a, an Armadillo OC? Yes, you can. It's Sonic Forces. That's not my voice. No, That's not how you sound. It. No more Stephanie. No more Stephanie. Oh, Emily. I'm... I'm really hoping. I'm really hoping that the, the, the torture scene. It, <laughs> stop mocking me! Stop it! Stop it! Fuck you! Fuck you! No! I don't know what we're doing right now. <laughs> I felt like I had an aneurysm. I just witnessed all that. <laughs> yeah, same here. I, I I I want like the torture scene from Grand Theft Auto Five, but in the uh, Sonic Forces. Interact, make it interactive and stuff. Oh, but um, fuck. What was the question? Something about video games in the movies, or did we move on from the question? Or... Yeah, I think we just moved on. Oh from yeah, that. Mo- move. Uh, video games that could work as animated films. Like, I would want an Overwatch oh, film. Damn. I don't know. I look with the cinematics. Everybody says themes. Overwatch has no lore, and I'm like, wait, does it or not? Oh, it totally does. There's a comic series behind. There's like storylines behind the characters, aren't there? Yeah, but it's like, uh, well, I don't know. I kind of find a a really stupid universe because, like, the world is filled with everything hovers in this universe. Like, you go to, like, an ancient temple in the game and there's, like, hover statues. Like, these ancient temples have hover statues for some reason. Like, statues that are on these, like, hover things that just float above the ground for no reason. Like, why do why do the statues need to hover? Well, why does a parked car need to hover? Um, where there's just, you just see giant robots just kind of, like, moving around in the background. I forgot, I forgot what the level's called, but you look out the window, you just see, like, these big old like, Bastion robots kind of just moving and jerking around. Although, if they ever do a uh, World of Warcraft, I mean, like, a, <laughs> a movie of Overwatch, like, I hope they do a better job, well, they do a better job than the Warcraft movie. Like my, my friends who love World of Warcraft, they love that movie. But me as a normie and a, I know a bunch of other normies who never played Warcraft or don't know the lore. We're just like, what the fuck's going on? Well, I had a vague idea of what's going on, but it's like, what's all this? What's this block thing? What's this? Here's a question from the gaming spanners. Had the Dillies tapes had any anomalous effect? Oh, yeah. The infamous Dillies. You'll never believe it tape from my SCP Vault 2 special. Have they had any anomalous effects? I have had several reports of scarecrow sightings and computers oozing black slime. Yeah. Also, people reporting that they're walking around smelling a lot of corn and hay and pumpkins out of nowhere. There's a, there's a lot of concern about this, and uh, I am sorry, but you, uh, you said so far no one has died. What so are the scary. jelly tapes? <laughs> For my SCP Vault 2 video. Um, oh, okay. I, I, I basically... The, the concept is that I find um, this videotape from the 90s made by a schlocky D, uh, D-level production studio called Dillies. 
which is a rip off, rip off of Ripley's Believe It or Not. And they make this straight to VHS movie that's collecting a bunch of urban legends. So at the end of that, um, there is an unnamed SCP because each legend in there is actually an SCP entry. So it was the formatting that I used for my introduction of the SCP um, vault entries this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, um, so. You said Scarecrow, right? Yeah, Scarecrow. Okay, because I like have my blinds open, looking out my backyard right now in the apartment complex, and uh, for some reason it's been like really quiet lately, like obscenely quiet, and I don't know why. Um, but I'm looking out right now. I think I see a scarecrow. Ooh. Like, I don't think I've. I don't have like a garden or anything, so I don't know why it's there. I, probably just some like Halloween plant, but it's a kind of a funny coincidence, you know. Ah, uh, lock the door. Oh, uh, okay. Close the windows. Close oh, the windows. Lock brain. the door. Well, I'll, lock the, I'll, lock, the, I'll lock the door, but I'm going to keep the window open because I like the breeze. Which, which reminds me, I, wa- I wanted to say, um, I was a little bit late to jumping in on the, the <coughs> pre-show, just getting things together over here, because when, when I came in, I was getting some last-minute preparations for my final film shoot for the October stuff. Mm-hmm. And as I walk in... um. I noticed that my bathroom door is closed and locked, and I don't do that because there's no keel on the other side of the bathroom door. So I had to kind of spend about 15 minutes um, unscrewing the doorknob with a knife close by to make sure that there was actually nothing in my bathroom that managed to get in there after I left. So that's why I was late to the podcast, because I was kind of experiencing my own sort of start of a web series slash creepypasta <laughs> in my home. You mm-hmm. dead, boy. No, yeah. no, there was nothing there. Uh-huh. So I'm I'm okay. But <laughs> it, it's actually really funny that that happened. Yeah, this is this is honestly pretty spooky. We got a lot of uh mm-hmm. got a lot of spooky stuff going on. Uh, How about we answer a happier question? Yeah, maybe one of uh, the YouTube chat. Uh, more the second best says, "Question: If you guys had the choice to end world hunger or your own lightsaber, what color lightsaber would you get?" <laughs> oh, definitely purple. Yeah, I want purple, just like a uh, Mace Windu, uh, Samuel Jackson. He was the best one in the the two D Clone Wars series. Piss yellow. <laughs> None of you guys would want to end world hunger. I mean, he said that wasn't mine. Would be blue. I mean, okay, okay. <laughs> if there's one, two, three, four of us. Uh, one of us would have to like offer to end world hunger, and the r- three of us would get lightsabers. So who does not really... want light? Okay, Pan, want... you and I could share the lightsaber. So I'll give up. I'll, I'll co- do world. Hunger, what color is the lightsaber? Uh, any color you want. I just want a lightsaber to kill my enemies. Okay, well, okay. Oh, this is okay. Now this question is actually a trap because, like, I know humanity has enough food for the whole world. The problem is we just don't have a way to distribute it. So we'd have the 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 cure for world hunger we just don't distribute it enough so this is a trap question so that's why you pick the lightsaber because humanity's fucked already so you know you know what mm-hmm. i mean i get you yeah or everybody would just have twice as much food yeah exactly. yeah. yeah we would overstuff the world i mean you know the whole thing about the cheese problem in america no <laughs> what you have a problem with cheese i i heard this thing is like essentially like uh america has produced so much cheese that we don't know what to do with it and the problem is that so many jobs rely on cheese, and we need people to eat the cheese. And if people don't eat <laughs> enough cheese or milk or stuff, it, in, in general, just dairy. Like, people need to be eating more dairy Why and is cheese. cheese such a funny word? We have too much cheese. We need people to eat the cheese. Monkey cheese. But like so there's we have so a much bacon shortage, but a cheese epidemic. Yeah, we have that's how, based <laughs> how much stuff does your life have to be where you have too much cheese? <laughs> so many of the American jobs rely on dairy and cheese and like the whole uh got milk campaign. It exists because because we have too much dairy products. But the problem is we, we haven't we have too many jobs, not enough people to to give dairy to. So all this uh, got milk campaign was just a, a, a an elaborate hoax to get people into eating more milk and dairy just to support the dying dairy products. Done. Great. <sighs> Christ. 
Uh, I swear this is real. <laughs> we have too much cheese. So yeah. We have no one to eat the cheese. I think there was a plan on like sending the cheese to to space. Hang on, cheese sending. Why would we I, need to send cheese to space? The moon is made out of cheese. It's all. It's already. This it's isn't already all in grommet. No one. There's so many like homeless people here. Just give them some cheese. Yeah, but that doesn't support the uh, industry. We need money. <laughs> We need to support the dairy industry, otherwise it all collapses down. So it's like it's like the freaking uh, I Love Lucy episode with the conveyor belt, except with instead of chocolate, it's cheese, and we have too much cheese, and we gotta just get rid of it all. <laughs> we gotta profit off the cheese, otherwise everybody loses God their damn, job. Too cheese. much cheese. That's it. Government edict right now. Whenever anybody orders a pizza, they must now get extra cheese. It is mandatory. <laughs> I mean, I've heard like the whole uh, milk isn't it actually as healthy as it's supposed to be. It's just a, it's just a myth. It's just a oh, no, lie. Life is a lie. <laughs> yeah, everything involving cheese is just a fucking fraud. Every fucking dairy, like, <laughs> damn it. Question: uh, Finneth F- Fox Fanatics says, "Question: Best cheese in a cartoon?" I I say the <laughs> the electric nachos from uh, OKKO OK or the lightning nachos. <sighs> No, the cheese, the cheese from uh, Kids Next Door. Yeah, I was just thinking of that. I'm like, there wasn't a, there was a cheese theme episode there. The one that there, killed there the an, lice. There was an episode with nacho cheese that killed lice. So if you just rub it through your hair, that's you know, right. It's free. Yeah, rub some fucking burning ass cheese on your hair. Speaking, Good idea, kids. Speaking of delicious food items in Kids Next Door, does anybody remember those look, tasty looking ass? Apple crumbles from uh, that one episode where number two was like fucking uh, L- L.A. Noir motherfucker. Oh, oh, it was like the, it was oh, like fucking yeah. someone's eye crust, like the pink eye crust. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, what's your point? <laughs> Fine, I guess we did. Like, the there's point that, is, and also go there, and instead, I'll remember the ice cream episode of Kids Next Door instead. The fourth flavor. The fourth flavor. Okay, okay. I have a question for everyone here. What do you think the fourth flavor was? My my idea is that. Ass. <laughs> well, in general the best flavor of any ice cream is always birthday cake flavor well there we go <laughs> yeah, I, I like to ask for some reason i think the fourth flavor just is like a transcendent like it tastes like nothing we've ever seen before even though number five is like that tastes just like she only is using that because she doesn't know how else to describe the taste some type I mean, of god tier maybe it's crazy cheese. flavor that activates all senses. Also, maybe I really it's... like how it was just like an Indiana Jones so it's with an ice cream theme. It was really cute. An Indiana Jones theme. Uh, and that's theme. the right way you do references. But the fourth way. flavor was obviously pumpkin spice. Oh, <laughs> fuck you. Get the no, no, yeah. you know it to be true. I was always a strawberry guy. I, I never really I was, vanilla or chocolate. Yeah, I was really hoping, Nick, you would say the fourth flavor was friendship. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I love cheesy shit like that where it's like it's the what about the friends we made along the it's way the goddamn I'm so used to that because of Yu-Gi-Oh it's the goddamn power of friendship that lets me God. see through your bullshit I was watching Yu-Gi-Oh and just like t- in the first episode Taya just pulls out a marker for no reason saying guys let's all write a smiley face on our hands this is this means we're friends I like how uh I like how in the Abridged series back when that was like super huge they're like, Tay, where'd you get that marker? I'm a kleptomaniac. I stole it from school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Isn't her, her name is actually Anzu. I love how in the new Yu-Gi-Oh! movie, they keep voices, names, and everything intact. Because it's like, that's how people remember it over here. Yeah. The Japanese version deep. has like nothing of the heart of the cards, no Shadow Realm, not really that much like friendship. Yeah. It's all just power and stuff. Then why the fuck did she write, her, write the, her, a smiley face on everyone's hand? Because freaking Yugi's grandpa is gonna like die or something. I like, don't worry, guys. We'll always be there for each other. But it's not like the power of our bond will defeat anything. Hmm. Well, let's see. One more question. What's your favorite brand of ass flavored ice cream? <laughs> um, Jesus. Just what you all need. <laughs> I don't need Jesus. <laughs> Jesus needs me. Damn. What do you think? think what do you think about K-pop? I love Poppy. Poppy's pretty cool. Mm. R- Ro Joe Bear says, question, which Simpsons Treehouse of Horror was your favorite? Pan, fucking, you no special, Rojo Ro Joe Bear, it's Roho, you fucking idiot. Close enough. Which is your favorite short from the Treehouse of Horror? I think, hmm, it's hard. 
Oh, one of my favorite was the ones where all the billboards come to life. I love that one. Oh, were, were any of you kind of creeped out by the Treehouse of Horror episodes when you were younger? Because like, yes, actually, I can't I recall a lot of them, actually, except for the one where Ned Flanders like the devil. I like the one where all the kids are like getting like cannibalized at school because it because it was like the closest one funny and terrifying. Yeah, that was terrifying. But like, I, I like the, my favorite Treehouse of Horror ones are where it's actually like unsettling and creepy and also funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Treehouse like, of I Horror like... usually is just completely unsettling because it's so unlike The Simpsons and they go right for the jugular. Well, sometimes they do, but then other times they tone it. Up. And it's not like this is like I'm talking most like good Simpsons. I'm talking like back then. I remember there was this one time where they um, the Simpsons were like kidnapped by aliens, baked into pies and eat. Bart somehow survived because he just like burst out of one of their stomachs. So then they just like raised them as their own. Nice. And, the way, and it was obviously very creepy, but they played it off as like, sort of like pseudo adorable and i'm like Ugh. yeah there was something unsettling about those episodes yeah which is my favorite part it's like this it was funny but it was also unsettling and there were even episodes where and like where lisa was about to get turned into a vampire and they go happy halloween everybody and they start singing the christmas carol <laughs> there was one episode that i talked about on my channel where bart loses like a baseball game like he mm-hmm. barely doesn't catch the ball and the whole team the opposing team just wins and the whole town just shits on Bart for the entire episode like they push him to suicide oh. they spray paint I hate Bart Simpson like everywhere on the walls and stuff wasn't that regarded as the worst episode of the Simpsons yeah like everyone's just, everyone's saying in the comments that that's like the worst episode hmm I remember when I was much younger my first time watching um Treehouse of Horror I didn't know that it was an annual Halloween special mm-hmm. And uh, I was so used to regular Simpsons that uh, it just kind of caught me completely off guard. And I don't I don't remember specifically what the setup was, but Ned Flanders got his head cut off and Bart Simpson saw it. And when the head fell and rolled into the street, it looked up at him with like this full bleeding gore neck and said, hi, Bart. And it just, ugh. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, it seems so great now, but back, back then, when you're not expecting something like that, it just kind of nails you right in the head. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I mean, also related, I was going to review the Simpsons Treehouse of Horror video game, the Game Boy Color game, since it's it's like a bunch, like, a, I don't know, like a variety mini game sort of thing based off different Halloween games, and it's terrible. But I ended up with the Danny Phantom review, which is coming out next. The Danny Phantom season. It's not coming out next. It's coming out the same day as the podcast. Yeah, unless we, um, unless I'm like, hey, let's just release this podcast next week. You know? No, it's a Halloween podcast, you idiot. Uh, the Simpsons always have, sometimes they have their Halloween episodes on Shut November. Shut up, you're not the Simpsons. We can be the Simpsons. Man, I am currently <laughs> killing myself to get stuff out on Halloween on him. You can push a little bit harder, too. Oh, well, I'm, He's not even the one pushing, I'm editing it. He's editing this, this one, you know, yeah... I already did my Halloween video. I don't know why. I always doing. I always like doing it like when October starts. Mm-hmm. October. So it's like it's already there. Yeah. <laughs> but is that all? Hey, you're smart. I'm just a masochist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that all for the podcast? I believe so. Um, I'm. I'm. All right. Let's introduce ourselves again. I'm Nolan. People. I'm Pan Pizza. I am blaming on George or Jorge. Mm-hmm. And I'm Nick Nocturne of Nightmind. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for coming, everybody. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Uh, bus for Jim. Uh, okay, so the Scarecrow is gone. <laughs> oh, oh, good. Uh, just, okay, uh, that's, just keep, keep that uh, door locked. Oh. Uh, Nolan? Um, okay, hold on. Somebody. Uh, okay. Hold on. No, 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 don't get up. No, don't get up. Stay with us. No, you dead, boy, you dead. No, <laughs> back. Oh, shit. So, okay, well, that's it, guys. Um, hey, guys. What's, that's, what did I miss? Uh, that's it for Nolan. Uh, he will that be replaced oh, yeah? by Emily yeah. and Stephanie on hey. every episode of the podcast from here on out. Hey. And I guess that's it. Okay. And thanks for having us. We're going to go now. So, okay. Should I sing or something? <laughs> <laughs>